So, just a couple of minutes ago, I came across a thread in the forums asking the reader if they've had any paranormal or creepy things happen to them. Well, it got me thinking about this one time I was evacuated from my childhood town. I must have been about seven at the time, and I can somewhat remember the event clearly, even if most of it's pretty hard to recall. Since all you guys are looking for a good spook, I'll give it a shot and tell the tale. So, in my childhood town, I had a good friend named Finny. Finny and I were really close, almost like brother and sister. I was an only child growing up, and I hung out with Finny almost every day, if memory serves. My childhood memories were so precious, and the town itself was so peaceful and benevolent. The town was surrounded by woods, and it even had its own police station and town hall. Everything was picture perfect. Everything was fine until there was a month of rain. When I say a month of rain, I literally mean it. It would never stop raining. It rained the whole month nonstop, and it was kind of strange, since the rain came in unannounced by meteorologists. It was almost similar to that of a hurricane with strong winds, thunder, lightning, and lengthy periods of rain. It almost came out of nowhere. It just started pouring. The sky went dim and gloomy, the clouds rolled in, the rain fell, and it continued for as long as I could remember. Eventually, the ponds, canals, and rivers would start rising due to the heavy rain. The flooding all took place within the first two weeks. I, I remember this one night, when it was thundering. I was looking outside my window. I noticed that the lightning had strange colors. Some would look orange. Others would look green, and some even purple. <laughs> this made the rain fall even harder. Eventually, the waters had gotten so high that it reached up to our ankles. We would still go to school, since they thought the floods weren't too big of a deal. They made us wear raincoats, boots, and also made us take umbrellas with us every day. We all took notice that there was an outbreak of insomnia among us children at the time, ever since the rain arrived. I found it hard to sleep as well, and it was one of the many reasons I looked at the lightning at night. We all felt so drawn to the rain, and found it strangely soothing and, and calming. The lights continued in the sky every night until, eventually, there was the loudest thunder strike. At least, I thought it was. I bet it woke the whole town up. It struck somewhere in the woods. And then things got weird. Every night, we'd hear weird noises, voices, whispers, and scratching outside. Sinkholes or burrows that could be found all over patios, lawns, gardens, and the woods. The water rose up to our waists, and eventually, school was called off on occasion. My friend Finney and some other kids in our clique would visit my house often to play. Sometimes, they might even stay the night. I remember this one time, waking up one night and, and being drawn to the window. We were in our living room, and my other friend, Bryce, was looking outside the window I felt enticed to look out of when I awoke. He and two other kids were at the window looking outside, as if intrigued. They said that someone was calling out to them and, and inviting them out to play in the rain. But we all looked outside and saw nothing. A few minutes passed as we continued to look out the window, feeling that strange enticement to go outside. Eventually, the rain hit harder, and it also appeared that something was swimming in my flooded backyard. It never emerged from the water to show us its identity, or what it was. We just assumed that it was the rain making weird patterns in the water as it hit. The urge to go outside remained, and we began hearing whispers again. They usually ranged from, come outside, it's safe, or come play with us. Most of what someone would say to convince a child to come out of a hiding spot. My dad came home, and we pretended to sleep since it was way past our bedtimes. My dad was a police officer and was working hard lately, but my friends and I didn't know why. I remember my dad walking in and, and speaking to my mother. He said that kids were disappearing one by one, 
they had no luck catching the kidnapper, and that the abductions were taking place much more frequently. And it was true. Walter, Lee, Jennifer, and, and many others didn't show up at school, or any type of meeting place we'd visit. I remember his face being so discouraged and worried, almost sickened. I remember my mom and dad's conversation as my friends and I lay awake listening to every detail. They couldn't find a single trace. Some were even taken from home and, and there were no signs of forced entry, he said. And my mother sat next to him trying to comfort him. Other conversations went on, but nothing relevant to what was happening at the time. And they eventually went to bed. However, before they did, they made sure to lock all the doors and close all the curtains. My friends and I stayed up talking about what we just heard and made up our own little ideas about what was happening. But all too childish. From time to time, the whispers would return and wake us up. Sometimes, it was even scratching or clawing at the walls and windows. We wouldn't dare open the curtains and see what it was for ourselves. And who could blame us? I mean, there was a madman that kidnapped children on the loose. These events went on for weeks, and the kidnappings only got worse. Houses were found empty in the morning, and, and sometimes some kids would be left behind, too traumatized to speak, and alone in the house with, again, no signs of forced entry. The town was mortified, and eventually a town meeting was called. Some of my friends were missing too, and all that was left of my clique was Finney and Dalton. We waited outside the courthouse with my mom as it went on. I remember asking about what they were talking about, but my mother would always avoid telling me, usually by saying, some very boring stuff grown-ups talk about, dear, or, you're too young, you wouldn't understand, plus, you'll probably fall asleep. It's pretty long, honey. <sighs> I remember the night before the evacuation, exactly one day before the month finished. I lived next door to Dalton, and it was the night I saw them leave. The lights didn't even go on. They just sort of went out of the house, leaving everything behind. They didn't bother to lock the door, they didn't bother to pack, and, and they didn't bother to change clothing. They left their front door and walked into the woods. I was assuming they were taking a shortcut, but I still found it pretty strange. It was drizzling a bit as they left, and the rain was beginning to die down. I started hearing the whispers again, only much louder this time. I looked out of my window, and I looked at the flooded streets. I saw strange patterns in the water again, as if it was trailing a moving object under the water. I remembered that there was a crazy person stealing children at night and decided to close my curtains so that no one could see into my room. Then the clawing and scratching began again. The whispers and scratching never left, and I was surprised I even fell asleep at all. I was woken up by my mother and the sound of the emergency evacuation alarm that the town hall had set off. I was too groggy to panic, and I just followed my mom outside. We were going through our escape route that went through higher terrain in the woods, and we took a dirt road. As we plodded through the water, we met with Finney and his mother. They both talked for a while as we paused, awaiting others to join us. My father and a couple of his squad came through the road bearing shotguns and flashlights. My mother asked him what he thought he was doing, and my father only replied, We found the place they were keeping the children. In the grimmest of expressions I've ever seen from him. My mother kissed him goodbye and wished him and his squad good luck as they trudged through the murky, muddy waters and off into the deep woods. My mom motioned for me to come with her, but suddenly another woman came asking for help. My mom told me and Finney to stay put as she left with Finney's mother to assist the woman. We did as we were told and stood in the muddy and murky waters. And we began to hear those faint whispers again and we felt soothingly relaxed. The feeling was ominous, and it persisted for the duration that we spent waiting for our mothers to return. I remember tripping into the water, or so I thought, until I couldn't seem to stand up. I panicked when I felt a force pulling me into the water, and as I heard Finney's panicked screams, 
I felt a hand grab tightly onto my shoulder and pull me to the surface. My mother carried me and placed me onto a nearby fence to check on me. I thought I'd probably tripped into a sinkhole or a deep area of the trail since there were many holes around there. I noticed Finney's mother calling out his name and searching everywhere for him. I didn't realize that Finney had fallen in with me too. I continued thinking it was a sinkhole we slipped into, and that's what I told Finney's mother and my mom. That is, until I felt a throbbing pain and a bruise on my ankle. Upon inspecting it, we found that a skinny, bony handprint was left on it. Another loud clash of lightning occurred, and it began to rain again. We eventually reached high ground, and we got into the buses and cars that waited for us. Many of the cars there were loved ones and, and family that came to pick up the townspeople that evacuated. We found that my uncle was waiting for us, and we got into his car. I didn't see my dad or Finney at the evacuation area. I never saw my dad or his squad again. They were announced missing. And, and to this day, I'm still not sure what happened to them, or Finney, along with all the other children. I am certain of one thing, though. There was something in that water. Something evil. And to this day, nobody ever figured out what it was. Or caught it. <laughs>